Joining me on the program today is Brandon Judd, former president of the National Border Patrol Council. Brandon, welcome to the program. Good to be with you. Thank you. So, Mr. Judd, we see you all over our televisions on different news outlets, and you're one of the top people in the country that has really had boots in the ground and been in this fight for many years on the border. Obviously, Kamala Harris recently did uh, go down to the border and check things out there, and she gave a speech in Douglas, Arizona. You, uh, the Border Patrol Council released this statement. I'm going to read it to you, and I want your reaction. Vice President Harris has ignored the border problem she created for over three years. She goes down there for 20 minutes for a photo op. Where has she been for the last three and a half years? So, you know, people like you that have worked on the border, are you insulted by this visit? Yeah, absolutely. So I had the impossible task of trying to work with this administration for a little over three years uh, before I retired. And, and it's, it's very unfortunate to see that she's going down for a photo op, give a speech when she could do things right now as we speak. She could put policies in place if she really wanted to. What she's trying to do is she's trying to go down and convince the the public that if she gets elected, she's going to do things. So what the public has to ask they have to say, well, why aren't you doing it right now? Why aren't you putting in policies in place right now? Why aren't you doing what is necessary to protect the American people right now? Why aren't you doing what's necessary to keep fentanyl out of our country right now? Um, and, and so, yes, it, it's very much a slap in the face to every single Border Patrol agent, former Border Patrol agent. It, it, it's a slap in the face to every single one of us when she goes down there, when every one of us know that she could do what is necessary now, but she's trying to convince the American people of Give me, give me my time in office, and I'll do it. She's not going to. If she was going to do it, she'd do it now. And Brandon Judge, she has been, over the last couple of weeks, much more pro-wall, which is very interesting. You know, a lot of different things, a lot of different policies that President Trump has proposed, like no taxes on tips, et cetera. Now she's kind of piggybacking off of that because she knows that they're popular. Um, it's interesting when we interview people on the show and we talk to our audience and engage Democrats, far left, far right, everybody at this moment in America agrees there is an emergency, there's a problem at the border. When she starts talking pro-wall, pro-border uh, patrol, pro-border security, do you believe her? No, I don't, because it goes against history. We have to judge her based upon what she's done. Um, if, we, if we listen to rhetoric and we judge only rhetoric, then, yeah, everything that she says is fantastic. But, again, if she really believed in pro-wall, she'd start building it now. You know, being in, you being in Phoenix, Arizona, I spent 11 years – um, in Naco, Arizona, Wilcox, Arizona, and, and I saw what happens when we build walls. When we build walls, we can control the flow. When we can control the flow, we can go after the cartels. We can do all of those different things. Walls don't stop asylum seekers, but walls absolutely allow us to control the flow of those people that are trying to get away. It allows us to control the flow of the drugs that are coming in. So again, it goes right back to the same thing. If she's pro-wall, why doesn't she start building right now? She's just trying to stonewall everybody. She's trying to whitewash her, her, her record, and she's trying to rewrite history, which, again, we need to hold her accountable for what she's done. History shows she does not care about the border. Brandon Judd, we just had recently President Zelensky visit the country, and he left with a big fat check from the taxpayers from the United States of America. We see what's happening over in Gaza, and we see that the United States definitely is supporting its ally, not only with military weapons, but obviously that just means financially. Coming from your background, as somebody that's been in charge down there at the, at the border in a leadership role, is it frustrating to you when you turn on the news and you see all of these problems and all of these conflicts around the world, even humanitarian efforts, and you see what's happening right outside your window? Is it frustrating that all the dollars, a lot of the dollars, are going overseas? And shouldn't we just be fixing our own problem first? What's even more frustrating to me, and yes, absolutely, of course, it's frustrating. But what's even more frustrating to me is knowing that we don't even need dollars. All we need is proper policy. We have the resources. We have the technology. We have the infrastructure. We have all of that to actually secure our border today. And all it would take is, is, is um, policy. We don't want to shift the burden onto the taxpayer. We don't want to, you know, uh, 
cause the deficit to go up by asking for more money. All we want is policy. That's all she has to give us, and she won't do it. So, again, she's talking a great game right now, but she's not going to do what is necessary. History has shown us that. She's going to continue to talk about how Ukraine needs to secure their border, how Israel needs to secure their border. And I'm not saying that they don't, but we have the resources, technology, personnel, everything that we need right now. All we're asking her for is policy, and she won't even give us that. And if she's not going to give us policy, what makes anybody think that she would give us money? Brandon Judd, we're a loving country. We're a country of immigrants when it comes down to it. And... um, just a little bit more heady philosophical for a moment, because there's no better person than to ask this question than of you. I've lived all over the world. I've done a lot of traveling. And when I talk to my friends abroad, they're like, what is going on over there? Because the truth is, this isn't just a recent problem at the border. This has been a historical problem for a long time in the United States. Why is it that other countries, even with bigger borders, miles wise, Um, can secure their border. And historically speaking, it's like Groundhog Day here. It's the same problem over and over again. Because they follow follow the rule of law. Again, nobody that wants border security that I know of and that I support are anti-immigrants. We're all for legal immigration. What we're talking about right now is we're talking about illegal immigration. We're talking about the chaos that ensues when we refuse to follow our laws. So when you look at, you know, right now, um, Germany is dealing, France is dealing with, uh, Germany and France are dealing with with, um, illegal immigration, and they are deporting people. And once you start doing that, once you start following your laws, people stop coming. This issue could be solved overnight if we would actually just hold people in custody, remove them when they do not have a legitimate claim to be in the United States. And it has been proven time and time again that 90% of the people that cross our borders illegally and claim asylum do not have a legitimate claim to asylum. But because we release them into the United States just to have them disappear and not show up to their final deportation proceeding, that's what invites people. That's the magnet that draws people to cross our borders illegally is the knowledge that they can violate our laws and actually be rewarded as opposed to other countries. If we would just follow the rule of law, we would get this under control tomorrow. We just don't have the political will to do it because we, we, we constantly have people that are pandering to special interest groups. You got to remove the special interest from politics. If you do that, you can be successful. Okay, last one for Brandon Judd, former president of the National Border Patrol Council. So January 20th, if President Trump takes office again, we interview all these politicians on this program, and it's a lot of talk. It's a lot of kind of bullet point stuff. But in practice, if he takes office again within like three months, what is one thing that you believe President Trump will change at the border that will make a positive impact? Just one thing. (laughs) He'll end catch and release by reinstating Remain in Mexico. Once you do that, it's like a light switch. Illegal immigration will drop. He dropped it to 45-year lows. He'll do it again simply by that one policy. Brandon Judd, thank you for your service. Thank you for your kindness and your talent. My name is Billy Harfosh, broadcasting from Star Worldwide Networks in Scottsdale, Arizona. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We'll be back with more explosive interviews.